Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. The historic town of Ogulin in Karlovac County is partially underwater as the river Dobra burst its banks in several places. Prime Minister Andrei Plenković and his team of ministers visited the area earlier today. Defense Minister Damir Krstičević deployed 100 members of the armed forces to keep floodwaters at bay. The military is here on the ground filling sandbags and pumping out water. We are actively using heavy machinery to push back the floodwaters as much as possible. This is only the first wave of flooding that has hit us here today. Unfortunately, the forecast calls for more rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, so we expect another wave of flooding in the days to come. Ogulin Mayor Damir Dimitrovic said construction works were in full swing to protect the city from similar disasters in the future. Unfortunately, Ogulin is used to these kinds of floods. At the same time, our plans to protect the city from flooding are in the final stages. So hopefully, in the next few years, Ogulin will be fully protected from this scale of flooding. Meanwhile, heavy rains and hail continue to pound large areas of the country. Split received a massive storm as rain and hail the size of walnuts caused extensive damage to homes and property. And a small municipality along the Danube River near Virovitica had their crops completely destroyed by a hailstorm that blanketed the area in ice. In only five minutes, it was like we were here in the dead of winter. Everything was completely white. You couldn't even see a single blade of grass because all was covered in ice. Slovenian Prime Minister Miro Cerar spoke on Slovenian television last night, saying he expected the European Union to pressure Croatia into accepting the arbitration court ruling on the border dispute between the two countries. He added that the decision, which granted them major territorial gains in Croatia's Savudria Bay, must be implemented by the end of December. Meanwhile, Croatia is insisting on the continuation of bilateral talks. We cooperate well in many areas with Croatia. Sometimes we cooperate extremely well. Yet we must admit that there are some areas where we disagree. There is a lack of trust. I am open to further dialogue because I have the necessary patience to build back our mutual trust. If Croatia fails to move in that direction, well, then that's their own decision. I want to establish trust between our nations and our politicians so that we may together implement the court's decision. Croatian Prime Minister Andrei Plenković responded to the comments made by his Slovenian counterpart by calling for more dialogue. We will see each other shortly during the UN meeting in New York. I also look forward to his visit to Zagreb. I know what we will discuss because our respective diplomatic services have continued to cover the matter in great detail. At the same time, I know exactly what Croatia's position on the matter is and I know what goals we need to accomplish. We must define the land and sea borders. And the only way to accomplish this is through bilateral talks. On this day in 1991, Croatian forces took over the Yugoslav National Army base in the northern town of Čakovec, becoming the first military facility to be freed on Croatian territory. The equipment and artillery were immediately distributed to Croatian forces across the country. September 17th is now recognized every year as the day Međimurje County was liberated and pays homage to the 8,000 defenders from that county who participated in the Homeland War. I would like to thank all the defenders from Međimurje County, as well as all the defenders across the country who lost their lives and who were not lucky enough to live to see a free Croatia. I give my respects to their families and offer words of encouragement to all of the Croatian defenders who are still with us here today. The annual Vinkovci Autumn Festival wrapped up today with the traditional parade through the center of town. More than 4,000 participants from 75 folklore groups from across the country and around the world took part in one of the largest festivals of its kind in Europe. President Kolinda Graber-Kitarvic was on hand to celebrate all things Slavonian, including the food, music, dance and costumes. She then addressed the crowd, thanking the people for their concerted efforts in preserving their rich cultural heritage. Just over 200 graduates received their PhDs in the Arts and Sciences today from the University of Zagreb. The graduation ceremony was held at the Croatian National Theatre, where University Rector Damir Boras congratulated the new doctors and handed out diplomas. 
I actually just got back from a one-year postdoctoral training course in Italy. It was a wonderful experience, and I recommend all graduates spend some time abroad if they have the opportunity. But at the same time, it's a great feeling to come back home. I received a position at the Faculty of Mathematics, so I must say I'm very happy. Taking a quick look at sports in tennis, Croatia has guaranteed their spot in the Davis Cup's Elite World Group for 2018 after beating Colombia today in Bogota 3-1. Marin Cilic dispatched Santiago Giraldo in straight sets 6-3, 6-4, 6-4. In yesterday's doubles matchup, Marin Cilic and Nikola Mektic beat the Colombian duo of Juan Sebastián Cabal and Alejandro Fala in a hard-fought nail-biter, coming back from two sets down to win in five. In football, wrapping up play in the ninth round of the domestic league, Hajduk lost at home to defending champs Rijeka 2-0, while Rudesh beat Istra 1961-1-0. In the results from last night's action, Slavin Belupo played Osijek to a 1-1 tie, while Dinamo hammered Inter 3-1. And Croatian international Nikola Kalinic scored both goals for AC Milan this afternoon in their win against Udinese. The Croat made his first start for the storied club after being signed in a 25 million euro transfer less than one month ago. The weather forecast for tomorrow calls for partly to mostly sunny skies throughout the country. Morning fog is expected in the interior. Meanwhile, the northern Adriatic and mountainous areas can expect increased clouds and rain showers, especially in the second half of the day. Other areas of Dalmatia will see more clouds and an increased chance of rain in the late evening. Winds mostly weak, with a moderate southwesterly along the northern coast, while the south will get a westerly and northwesterly. Morning lows of between 7 and 12 degrees inland and between 15 and 20 on the coast will give way to highs of 19 to 25 degrees Celsius and slightly cooler and higher elevations. Continental regions will see rain and clouds on Monday and Tuesday with intense storms in places. A northerly and northwesterly wind will usher in cooler weather. Skies should clear up after the middle of the week. The coast will be much of the same with rain in periods of intense storms through till Wednesday and clear skies by Thursday. Rain will start along the northern coast on Tuesday and spread towards the south by Wednesday. A strong northeasterly will gain strength on Tuesday and spread to the rest of the coast by midweek. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow night.